Get some, uh, all right, right, good morning over here. I'm gonna start this feed off real quick. So good morning to all folks out there. Um, right here in Venice on 7th and Westminster at our second uh, gathering for um, uh, prayer gathering for, uh, to uh, preserve this uh, sacred spiritual space, uh, Venice history, African American history on the west side. And um, we're here gathering uh, in, the, in, in good energy and good prayer um, at this historical uh, space here. And so, um, yeah, just, you know, we got some people here today, you know, more speakers today and people um, give some testimony and some thoughts on what's going on over here. There's a 108 year old church. And like we know, the church is more than a building. It's a spiritual space. It's a sacred space, you know, um, um, where people have gathered for like, you know, for generations over here. So it's more than a building like some other uh, lames like to try to frame it, you know, it's the church is a people, it's a community space, spiritual space, and um, you know, you can't put a price on that and you can't mock it, you know, like some other uh, neighborhood council people are doing. I'll put no names because I have a little compassion, but um, but yeah, we're going to, you know, go around real quick and, uh, you know, get some more palabra, some more uh, word over here and um, what's up, Roger? Thanks for joining. If you can share this too, anybody watching, please share. You know, so we can build some momentum to, you know, kind of give light to what's going on. Uh, this desecration of this 108-year-old uh, historical space, African-American spiritual space, all of our spiritual spaces. You know, this represents our community in a lot of ways, too. So I want to get some words over here. Pam, you ready to go? or? Laddie, Pam. Right now. I know, but on what? On Facebook. Is it on Not yet. It'll go on there after. Uh, because I got a reporter that wants to see it. Okay. We, 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 we could post, post it after. We could post it after. Yeah. No, but how can you see it now? Um, uh, dang it. Um, I'm not too sure. Okay. I would have to. Uh, but I'll tell him it'll be on Saturday. Or just he, he can go to my, my profile. Mike Bravo. It should be open. Yeah. So we, we ready to do this or? Okay. All right. What's up? What's up, primo? What's up, relatives out there? All right. So let me. Okay. So you want you want to stand over, want to stand over here or? Yeah. You guys want to kind of gather over here? Well, you guys want to gather over here a little bit so we can. Okay. Like with all Joe. things, we're gonna start. We're trying to connect to the Creator with the Heavenly Father. We're gonna pray and ask Him to continue to help bless us and help us with this situation here at First Baptist Church. Okay, so I'm going to pray. Holy Father, created unto, unto you, we pray that our voice shalt thou hear this, that thou grant loving kindness to the hearts of our enemies, that they rescind from the cell of the sacred ground. As descendants of the twelve tribes of Israel, we ask for your grace and mercy. We ask for your blessings upon the sacred ground which First Baptist Sanctuary sits on. We ask for protection of our sanctuary and us whom well, who dwell in your shelter of the Most High. To you, Heavenly Father, our refuge and fortress, our Creator, in whom we trust. For it's you, Heavenly Father, who delivered us from the snares of the trappers, who wish to destroy our sanctuary and the sacred ground which it sits upon. We gather here asking you to send an angel to guard this sacred ground here at 685 Westminster Avenue. Yes, Consider, O oh, heavenly creator, please hearken unto the voice of our cries. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Beautiful, Beautiful. Miss Naomi. Yes, Pam. Oh, so good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am just humbled to be here and standing on the steps of this fabulous historical church. I, I came early and I sat here and I thought about all of the baptisms and all of the weddings and all of the 
funeral, going home services, all of the programs that have been held in this church. And many people still live in this community and many people have gone, but people see this as the homestead of Venice for where they can still come and have services to consecrate the memories of their people, their family members who may have passed on. And when I sit in this church, I think about the many generations of families that I know here from Venice. And it's heartbreaking to me uh, to, to, to know that this, this effort, this evil directed effort to tear down this monument to our community. But it also gives me passion and emboldens, emboldens me to fight. We're here today because of the plans that they have for this church. But this church is just one of the symbolic movements on the part of what's happening to Venice as a whole. When you look around you and you see that, yes, the church, a monument in the community, that's the largest thing that has happened so far because of its visibility. But look at those things that may not be so obvious to us. The kinds of changes that have happened at Oakwood Recreation Center. The kind of changes that have been brought about because our craftsman houses have been torn down and replaced by uh, concrete and glass boxes. Look at what businesses are moving into our community that we can't even purchase what it is that they're selling. What about the stores that are uh, <coughs> uh, producing products that we can't even buy? On Rose Avenue, the wine bars. I don't drink wine, but the fact is, is that our community has been inundated by small businesses and by restaurants, and the city says, oh, well, we need the tax base. It's all about the money. It's not about the people who live here in the community. Friendship Baptist Church is another church that is under siege. We gotta get busy, people. The things that are happening in our community, we've gotta make a change. We're not so opposed to change, but we are opposed to the rapidity of it. We're opposed to the fact that the community is not involved in it. We're opposed to the fact that we've been overrun and that the city, the county, the state, the surrounding communities and Venice Neighborhood Council is not for us. And so when you have so many that are against you, and when you look like you are being marginalized, because you are, because they don't care about what it is that you think, because it's money and fame and influence for those people that are in power. I just want to read one thing to you that I found, or that I was guided to in the Bible when I meditated this morning. And it says, <clears throat> from James chapter 2, Dear brothers, how can you claim that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, if you show favoritism to rich people and look down on poor people? That's right. If a man comes into your church dressed in expensive clothes and with valuable gold rings on his fingers, like realtors do and like city planners do and like the investors do does. and the Hipsters. Venice Neighborhood Council does, um, uh. <laughs> And you make a lot of fuss over the rich man and give him the best seat in the house and say to the poor man, you can stand over there if you like, or else sit on the floor. Well, judging a man by his wealth shows that you are guided by wrong motives. Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. God has chosen poor people to be rich in faith, and the kingdom of heaven is theirs for that is the gift of God, has promised to all those who love him. And yet, the other two strangers who have despised the poor man, don't you realize that it is usually the rich man who pick on you and drag you into court? <laughs> and all too often, they are the ones who laugh at Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear. So when we talk about the reality of the Bible being just what it is today and when we talk about the rich and we talk about the influ affluent and how those who are not necessarily poor in spirit or poor in character or poor in any other way except that 
You're building houses that we can't afford to buy. You're building places that we can't afford to live in. And we're not asking uh, on bended knees for you to give us any special favors. We're saying that this is our community and we want the recognition that it's our community. A famous person that I knew very well, Derek Bell, who was a social justice lawyer, um, very well known internationally. And he became well known because he, he uh, refused to uh, continue his tenureship at the university because they, they refused to hire another person of color. He was one of the first black men that had tenure at the university. But he said, I'm not going to be a token. You need to hire other folks. And if you're not going to do that, then I resign. He writes this. I find that people trying hard to lead ethical lives must draw on courage frequently because standing up requires taking risks on a regular basis. I see all of us around here knowing that we take risks in doing what we do. In fact, risk taking is probably the most defining act of an ethical life. Ethics require us to think out our positions on things and to take principled stands as a result of those positions. Are we taking principled stands? We don't make any money for what we're doing. We don't get any great gold stars for what it is that we're doing, but we know that it must be done. And it's only through our action that change will occur. People say that we're facing the impossible task because we're up against legislators. We're up against um, rich people. We're up against people that are in power. But we don't believe in the impossibility. Why? Because God tells us there is no such thing as impossible. I don't believe in can't. I don't believe in problems that That's don't right. have resolutions. I make my money solving problems. And so we're going to be here to That's solve right. this problem. Yeah. <laughs> Principal stands will be tested regularly by a society that valorizes external indications of success such as money and corporate power over much else by understanding that courage is not a reflex but a consequence of knowing your own mind determining tight and wrong I'm sorry determining right and wrong for yourself and acting on that understanding you create the possibility of risk taking in the interest of the greater good your good and the greater good becomes almost synonymous it becomes our common cause. Mm -hmm. We've just got to keep on fighting. Thank you. We've got to keep on praying. We've got to keep on knowing that we individually make the difference. I was saying earlier that <coughs> movements don't fail, they die. They die from lack of involvement. They die from lack of persistence. They die from lack of energy. They die from lack of continuing to move forward. How often have we come to something and been energized and passionate? We beat on our chest, we raise our fists, we raise our voices, and then later on, it's gone. So the movement must continue. We energize, we keep each other energized, we keep our voices out there, we continue to spread the word and we continue to, to uh, <coughs> encourage other people to join in. The movement must not die movements don't die don't fail they die so this movement to save this church must not fail you must live <coughs> Sarah tell your story like you did that night <clears throat> I'm a local Venice resident born and raised here on Westminster Avenue my father is a Sudanese immigrant, my mom from the East Coast. When they came here in the 80s, this was a place for everyone. This was a place where not only the Rastas and the you know, people of every country, every nation, I saw the poor, I saw some rich, we had celebrities, but it was all balanced and it was all love. And no matter who we were in this community or what neighborhood or what part, we were one, and we've always been one. And this is the only place that I've known in the entire coastline where there's been such a community with so many diverse people and artists 
and love, where you could afford to make a living, where you could afford to live here and own a house and to be and to thrive. And now slowly by slowly, they're just taking away our soul, the community. What makes this community whole is each and every one of us, each and every different face, because the differences are what made Venice, Venice. People came to see the eccentric, the loving, the kind, the art, the, this city breathe. We are a heartbeat. Like we, we breathe life into this city. And slowly but surely, I just feel devastated because this entire city's heartbeat is slowing down. And we're losing what makes us us. And I don't want to lose this community. I want us to grow. But I want us to grow with respect and love because this is my home. This is where I felt at home. This is the only place on this side that made me feel like I belong. Every single person I saw was a family member I've known since I'm a kid. And to slowly see faces disappearing and people going through more struggles than ever before, all for the greed and the money and these buildings and this corporate greed. And this, is, this has become the new Hollywood playground. This is, this is where they took Hollywood from and they all came here. But we don't want to give it away. We want to preserve it and I want this to be a place that my son, who even at five years old understands that what's happening here is wrong. That this was a place for everyone and a place where he could come and be. And I want that for our future generations and I want people to know what Venice really is. You know, to, to not drive by here on a, a Sunday and see people outside and loving each other is heartbreaking. And to think that one single person wants this for themselves as a house, when this is a house of God for everyone, is just greed. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Thank Sorry. you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Got some, anybody, anybody has any words or want to say something? Please step up or just give testimony, thoughts, you know, uh, strategies or what have you. Uh, when I first came here in 1980 also, I was a 25-year-old white guy from Orange County. And my first goal was to move to Santa Monica. I found Venice Beach. Venice Beach found me. And it was maybe one of the luckiest things that ever happened to me in my life. Because I was going to UCLA at the time, and I thought I was going to get an education there. What I found is I got my education here. Seeing people suffer for the crack genocide that was exploding at that time taught me more about politics and what this country really serves and who its president is willing to lie and deal drugs for than anything you'll ever learn in a classroom. Seeing this community police itself in the middle of that genocide, do everything they could to protect lives and limbs when no policeman would come down here and do that, showed me what to protect and serve really means. This, this community is one of the richest cultural wetlands on the planet. And the people here, the history here, the diversity here, just like a wetland, it's a place where salt water and fresh water meet, where white guys from Orange County can meet black folks that were brought here as house servants for a rich developer and his dream of making this a playground for Hollywood. All those developer dreams in Venice over and over have died. Silicon Beach is a nightmare that needs to die. We need to restore this wetland, yeah. this cultural wetland. It's a people's beach. It's not a silicon beach. And this here is one, it's like one of the little coves or it's one of the little coral reefs where wetland life can gather and breathe and learn something to face the rest of this ocean of humanity that we are trying and we produce so many geniuses to influence from Tina Marie to Ray Bradbury to, to all the folks whose works are on archive at Beyond Baroque to the people whose blood was spilled in these alleys 
because they were denied jobs in the 80s because of the color of their skin, because they were told that, that oh, um, California is not segregated. When the segregation here was more evil than anything That's Bull right. Connor ever pulled out, because it was done with a smile. Mm. Because it was, it was done with denial. To put a plaque here would be sacrilege. For, and I'd like to address the Penske family to close. Penske, if you really want to build your home on a stolen land, on a stolen deed, you're going to be sitting in this house that you build where you sell to somebody knowing that you have sold it on a stolen deed from a corrupt pastor who sold out his, his spiritual congregation. That's what you'll be walking over every day. That's what you'll be sleeping on. That's what you'll be looking out the windows and seeing. And you are going to have to live with that. Unless this is returned and restored the way it could be. You Penske family, you have the right, you have the power to do that. You could really bring a blessing to your family and this entire community. Mm -hmm. By recognizing that you're not going to lose a deal here. You're going to gain a legacy. Yes, Give this yeah, back to the fan. So Give this back to the community. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, all right. I know we got some more words. People wanna. Do you wanna speak? Huh? Not yet. I, I'll, I'll speak in a minute. <laughs> fan, you wanna add to it, or anybody wanna add something? I, I'm I just wanna say that the church that was across the street, um, because there has been a lot of talk about whether or not this church is really a hundred years old or not, because when it was built. I attended the church across the street. I was not a member of the church, but I attended that church on more than one occasion because it was a community church. <laughs> and so your friends went there, your parents, uh, friends of your parents went there. It was a community church. And so uh, it was it, it was common for people to attend the church and to know the family because they live right here in the community, right there on, on um, Brooks and, and 6th Street and, and, and 7th. And so when you talk about moving this church, you're talking about eliminating a cultural edifice in this community that is in the hearts and the mind and the spirits and the soul of this community. It's not just the building. It's what the building stands for. It's what it's what's inside of those walls. It's what's on this hallowed ground, this holy ground, the holy because the community lived and breathed and died and existed and gave here. Birth, Prayed, baptized. gave birth, baptized, as I said before. The services that were there, the hallelujahs that went up, the forgiveness that happened here. Uh, does it matter that this is a new structure? The ground is still the same. Thank you. The ground you. is still the well, same. Well, how can the ground is still the same. The, the point is that the lack of understanding that is perceived from this whole thing is, is mind-boggling. What part of our culture, every culture, everybody has a culture, our black culture, this is our sanctuary, this is our sacred ground. Our parents built this. They did without, they, 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 but when the church was on the north side of the street, the south side of the street, which is, sits on 108th and Vernon right now in Los Angeles, my cousin was in the boys choir. Matter of fact, First Baptist and New Bethel used to have a thing. It was like a rival thing, you know? So it's a lot here. This is where we come for peace of mind, for guidance. It's just like our hub. And it represents our pride that we brought here when our families came here to build this community. I mean, literally, my mother was born in a house right there in 1926. The courts that you're tearing down, that was my great-grandfather, my mother, my grandmother's daddy's house. Okay, so this is a sacred, hollow ground. You cannot take this and just do anything with it. You cannot just put your house here because your daddy fell and broke his hip and you got three kids and you want a house with uh, parking on top. This is a church. 
We are the church. This is our sanctuary. This is our foundation. That plaque that Ruth Galantler put up there and dedicated as a historical landmark is all we're asking is to preserve this hollow ground. That's all we're asking you to do. It is a historical piece for the black community. You cannot erase the blackness of Venice. That's what built this community. It has nothing to do with prejudice or racism. This is the only place we had to go, you know? Couldn't cross We Lincoln. couldn't go nowhere. This little one square mile, <coughs> the names that people brought from where they came from, these names right. around here, that's how you got these names. Everything you see here was built. My grandmother had a wash house. Her sister had a wash house right there on the corner of Brooks and Broadway Alley, that Broadway little house Alley. in the Ferris. That was my grandmother's laundromat. Her sister, Venus, who my mother was named after. That's where the building, that was her laundromat. They did uh, clothes for the military and stuff. But what they we meant do, for bad, yeah. because they were relegating us to a, what they thought was a substandard environment, what they meant for bad, mm -hmm. we made good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Say that. We, we built this community. We lived in this community. We held hands and we hugged and we birth babies and we raised children and we went to elementary school here and and junior high and high school here and our parents and our babies. worked here raised their families here bought property here became owners and business people here what they meant for bad we made good, right. and now they want it back, and damn it, they're not going to just be able to come in here and take it. You want it? You better fight for it. Yeah. Because we're here to not just give it up and let it go. It's not going to happen like that. And you better mind, because the heavenly creator sits high, and he looked low, and he is not pleased with and this. And when they go low, we, we go, go high. high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everybody for, for sure. just coming and participating, but we really got to just Hi. be more vocal and get the word out to everybody a little more in the community. Everywhere we go, we need to talk and tell people about what's going on with 685 West Minister. It's not just about a black thing. It's about sitting in 687 across the street. It's, it's, it has a lot to do with the hub of community of love. They bought votes. You know, so. We just need to really be mindful and just get the word out and try to get people to understand. And I'm putting a shout out to everybody. I'm putting a shout out to the Shorelines and I'm putting a shout out to the V13. This is your hood. We need you to back it up. This is a godly effort. That's right. Get involved. You say you love your community, but we need to start because we're not going to let them take another church or another school. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to say something too, too, if you can yeah. give me a video, whatever, too. <laughs> What's up? So, uh, you know, for those who don't know, my name is Mike Bravo. Uh, I'm fifth generation. My, my nephew Joe, he's sixth generation right here. Sunset Avenue, Bravo family, and uh, it's a it's an honor to stand here with with all my relatives here, my my, my newfound auntie since I moved back here a few years ago, and uh, you know, uh, people get. People get it mixed up with like they want to make the argument that this is only like a 60-year-old building or a 50-year-old building, but it's 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 it's, it's the land. It's a space. It's it's a community space. It's a sacred spiritual community space, you know. And not only that, this is indigenous land as well. Right. Before yep. it was Venice, whatever. This is you know this is a uh, Getchengna, you know Yangna, you know. But you know, uh, shout out to the Tongva people, the local native people. This is still sacred land, regardless of what flag flies up or or, or you know who tries to buy it out or whatever, you know. Um, you know, I just, I'm just really, uh, you know, we didn't fight here in Venice. A lot of times people like to say Venice is lost or Venice is done. No, it's not. No, it's, it's not, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of damage that's been done, you know, but like a lot of it comes down to the words, or the I say the power that we give people's words. When people say on the internet, whatever, oh yeah, it's done, or money talks, or you can't do anything, that's just like, if you accept those words, that's just like. The phoenix you're... rises from the ashes. Yeah, I know, and like, you know, like for us to, to get power to, to those negative words, we're already, being defeated just in our minds already. Right. We gotta make our minds stronger and our hearts stronger. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm, I'm very honored to stand by all, all these, all, all my relatives here, all these Venice folks over here. You know, everyone who's out here today, thank you for being here. And um, you can stay tuned on, on savevenice.me is our website that we're using to kind of, you know, uh, spread the message, put some of our media out and, and communicate 
And um, you know, every so, Sunday you know, we're here. Bring a friend. Bring another person. Yeah, bring some more people. Like we bring a friend. We built box lunch. You know, we're we're just starting out. It's gonna be a weekly chairs. event, mm -hmm. a weekly thing every Sunday, eleven o'clock. Bring music. Bring bring your spiritual energy, your spiritual word. Right. And um, you know, tell my folks, just you know, just come through and and and, and support. And mm -hmm. uh, there's something else I wanted to say, but I just forgot what it was. Uh, you know, just. You know, I mean, we're all, we're all here, black, brown, united. You know, I, I'm not all a Christian right, yeah. per se, but I'm a, I'm a person of, of, of creator. I'm, I'm, I'm a child of creator. I'm a child of creator mother, creator father. And uh, you know what? We all need to be here, support each other. Right. And uh, support, you know, support the, this beautiful spirit energy that we have here. So I just want to just give thanks to everybody. And that's all I want to say right now. Unless you want to say something too. Yeah. Six generations. <laughs> Six generation. Mm. Yeah. I think that's it. I'm good. <laughs> That's the other thing is that yeah. Thanks. Thanks. also at the same time as we're here. So that could keep a lot of people from coming. Right. I went to church yeah. because uh, we have an early morning service so I could go early and still get here. But we need to know that a lot of churches have their services mm -hmm. at, at 11 o'clock and that may keep people from, it is. from coming. So That's we might want to think about oh, we can earlier think, yeah. or later okay. or or. or switching up on the time, maybe 11 this time and one another time okay. or something like right. that. So we can uh, accommodate more people. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, well, I just want to say that uh, uh, when I heard about this, well, let me give you a little bit of background on me. Say your name. Uh, my name is Jay Young. I was born and raised in Gadsden, Alabama. Um, I have, through my life, been drawn to or attra attracted to those who are in need and those who are suffering and righteousness. You see, this is not so much, to me, this is not so much about a protest to save a church right. or a building. Right. It is standing up for righteousness, mm -hmm. for humanity's sake. Right. Mm -hmm. The values that mankind has embraced right. mm -hmm. this materialism mm -hmm. that they have embraced mm -hmm. in, 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 in the subjugation of, of people to, to own and to have that things have really contributed to mankind's demise. Mm -hmm. He's not a human being anymore, not one of caring and spirituality, not one who abides by certain uh, ideals and certain values that have been established across racial, ethnic, religious lines. It's well established. You can go through all the different religions, all the different books, and there's a line of continuity that goes through there that says, hey, you don't do people wrong. That's right. You help those who are in need. You do the things that make us better human beings. Those things that relate to or encapsulate uh, materialism mm -hmm. and inhumanity are the things we have to avoid. So no matter, as you can see, I'm a Bernie Sanders kind of guy, <laughs> but right. if somebody had a protest or standing up for anything, as long as it's about fairness and righteousness, mm -hmm. I'm going to be there. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I stand with those who have to need my, and it, it, it makes me, personally, it helps me to be a better human being because I'm not he, out here trying to gather and have and, and all these material things, which are nice. As you can see, I got a little car over there and, you know, certain things I do, but I never forget people, yeah. regardless of who you I are, stand. regardless of what your religion is. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. But when you. I heard about this church, and whatever, here I am. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because unless I stand with you, yes. Muslims, Christians, yes. Hindus, right. everybody, then I'm doing myself a disservice. Yes. If I, what you're seeing in the world today, with all this fighting and killing among different religious and ethnic mm -hmm. groups, see, that is what happens when we fail to see who and what we are. Mm -hmm. We are put here to know one another, to get acquainted with one another, That's to right. help one another, and not to downtrod one another. 
that's a line of continuity that runs through all the religions. So, mm -hmm. even though I grew mm -hmm. up in a church and whatever, and I've looked and been involved in different religions, whatever my spiritual belief is, I'm going to stand with the righteous, yes. mm -hmm. right. whatever you call yourself. You have a so, place here. Mm -hmm. so that's what. That's what Venice is yeah. about. Yeah. 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 Always has been. Yeah. Yeah. You want to say anything, brother? You want to say anything? Since we're, since we're in the circle, usually, you know, it's good to go in the circle and kind of get some... You don't want to say nothing, Kevin. Come on. You got rich history here. Come on. Come on. I remember when him came to Venice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, you know... Uh, you Whatever. Mean, it's Whatever you just, say, we need, we need your heart. generation to speak. Just, just speak from your heart, bro. It's all good, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm 100 with everything you guys are speaking about because, I mean, I, it, it just hurts me to be put in a position like this for... Years when we was young, coming up, we would hear about one day they're going to come and they're going to take this, they're going to take that, they give up, and then look at it, it didn't happen. Okay, mm -hmm. now that it's here, what can we do about it? There's a lot of things we can do about it. I think one of the things that we need to do is start a coalition mm -hmm. right here of individuals that have been here, the people, you understand me, this is our dirt, if this is what this is, we put a coalition together. We're going against them people that's sitting over in this little board that's sitting over there talking about they talking about Venice. You don't know nothing about Venice. How that's you right, going to tell DMC. about Venice, gentlemen? We need to be sitting on these boards. We need to have a committee together where we're going to be able to say, look, yeah. what's ever going yeah. on from this point on in Venice, yeah. you understand me, y'all got to come through us. There you yeah. go. Mm -hmm. That part right there. See? And y'all can do that. If y'all talking about what well, we want, okay, and if that's the case, come through us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we're the ones that, well, no, we don't want that there. You know what I'm saying? You can take that somewhere else. Yeah. No, we want that bus trade to stay right there where that bus trade has always been all of these years. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's messing with your business and you want to move this and move that? Move your business. Thank but you. we're keeping this as the way it's supposed to be. Oh, Kevin. These are what we're talking about. A community get together, you understand me? And we put a commission together for us so the next time when stuff starts going on, because it's going to be a next time. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. You have to there come through us. Stop. You know what I'm saying? Right there. And so how do we talk, how do we put that together? I don't know. Who we bring in, you understand me, to help us put that together? I don't know. But what we need to do, you understand me, is to put that together and all of the other stuff that's going on around us, it'll slow down to a stop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that way all the ones that we know that's not for us, mm -hmm. not for the community, not for what it is that we believe in, we can push them to the side and keep it going for us, for the community. A lot of people don't understand about that, um, you know, low, remember Lee's Body Shop over mm -hmm. there, what was that? Yeah, uh, uh, Brooks, Brooks and Hamilton. Yeah. Electric. Hampton. Electric. Or electric. Well, well, electric, Brooks yes, so electric. More, more electric now. Right. Electric. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not a secret, that it's going to be a high-rise hotel, motel, built right there. Yep. You know what I'm and it's going up high, so that way people to get in and go out and see the ocean and this and that. Because we only three blocks, we only three blocks. You know what I'm saying? From the beach. I mean, my family members would come down and say, "Yeah, y'all move back to Venice, y'all down there. Where's the beach?" I said, "Look, come here. Let me show you something. This is Brooks. This is Brooks. Three blocks that way. You're on the beach. When you finish with the beach, you come back to Brooks right here at Fifth Avenue. We right here. Just." Well, you no, I'm not going, y'all, because I grew up there. No, yeah, yeah. too much. Yeah. I'm not finna. I mean, how many years that the sand? Well, I mean, what? It wasn't that But every time you understand me, I ain't got no business on the beach at all because the sand is there. <laughs> so you know, and I got tired of it. And I sent my yeah. family members yeah. to go to the beach and this and that and come back. I mean, so how Kevin, can I? before you came. We were talking about just what you're talking about, putting together a coalition because we have different little bodies working on different things. Like we're concerned about gentrification, we're concerned about social justice, we're concerned about housing. So we need to have a coordinating council or whatever. So how do we get people like yourself to serve on those committees and to keep the passion and the involvement going? Because what we do have sometimes is the energy to get the movement going and the concern, and then it just sort of whittles down into nothing. So would you be willing to serve on a coalition of interested parties to keep Venice alive? 
or talk to some of the. No, the, I, I'm asking yeah. him because he brought it up. See, this yeah. is how this, this is how it happens. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you when you have an idea and you have passion about that idea, yeah. then you have to be willing to do something yeah. about it. I understand where you're saying because it's. Be, I have to admit it's been a challenge for me. I go to bed at night saying, Naomi, why don't you do more? Mm. Naomi, what else is it that you can do? Right. Naomi, okay, yeah, you got to give that up if you're going to do that. Yeah, you won't be able to do that anymore if you do this. Oh, mm. uh, if you give 100%, you're going to have to let a lot of other stuff go. So the issue is, are you ready to make yeah, that move where you're going to have to set aside maybe some of those enjoyment things that you that you have going for you to sacrifice and give what the community needs because we are in a crisis right now and when you are in a crisis it calls for urgencies yeah. and it calls for setting aside a whole lot of other things that you love or that you may need to do and that's what sacrifice is so i'm gonna ask you again can I add something to that? Can sure. I, that? I just. But can you let him answer that I, question I, I, first? Because I don't want him to get away. <laughs> <laughs> On record. <laughs> don't want me to get away. Mm-hmm. And the question was. Would you be willing to serve on the kind of council that you say we need? Uh, yes, I would. I, I, I would definitely be. You know, a part of something like that is beautiful as it, it, it would be, but I don't understand if you understand exactly what it is that I'm saying. I do understand what you're saying. You know, I mean, because in order for us to even have a community that's going to be able to where we'll have an ear where people will listen to us when we speak, it's going to be a lot of sacrifices and a lot of, it's going to be a lot of stuff going Did on. Did I just say that? <laughs> no, but I'm, eh. About the sacrifice. Yeah, but, it's about, about the giving up. See, because I, I'm not going to ask you how old you are because I know you're about the same age as my son. So I'm just going to say that we've been in this community for a long time. We were here when we fought to get those 15 apartment buildings built so that there would be housing for people in Venice. Yes. And wait, 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 wait. I protested up and down this street right here. When UCLA and the police department and the rest of the people came and said, mm -hmm. you know, Venice, what, Venice, what, what, what about Venice? So I wrote the first proposal that and got fun it. federal funding for funders. Venice that got Project New Action. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so when we so get, you're familiar with a lot of things. I am fifteen. Uh, you, can, you can answer a lot of questions for an individual like myself because a lot of things that need to be known about that and yeah. I think that we would need to do that you understand our personal per you know down and you know bringing it all out because it's right. a lot of stuff but again I don't have a problem with that because I know that if it's done right and if it's done the way it's supposed to be done right. and once we get that 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 stronghold where we can have it in there and they have to come through us then it should be a better place I mean I walk down the streets and I'll be like, wait a minute. This okay. is yeah. And you saying the yeah, same thing. But I grew thing up that here. I don't, how do you do that when you grew up here? That's just puzzling me. They, you know they do it the, because we have factions mm -hmm. and we don't have a movement and we don't have something that takes us all the way until we reach our objective. We need the cross sectional, multi generational, multi diverse community that's gonna fight and gonna stick, stick with, with the it, fight. Like we and to. we need voices like yours. We need people your age. We need people younger than you. We need people older than like you. This baby right here. Mm -hmm. To Six say, this baby. is our community. Are you willing to sacrifice for it? I'm telling you. I've had that discussion with Naomi, and Lord knows it's hard when you know that there's going to be certain things that you can't do, certain places that you can't go. That's I'm right. here this morning Me because I left the service that of my church to say, y'all excuse me, there's my hand up. I got to go because I have a commitment in Venice, and I'm just saying that we all need to, to say, maybe we can't be here every single Sunday, but if we have the commitment from our heart, 
and from our spirit that we're gonna fight the fight until the fight is won. Yes. And that may not be a week, a month, or a year, but we cannot give up. How did our ancestors make it to where they are? How did Venice get to be where it was with the Reese's and with the Tabers, the Tabers and with the Williams? And how did we get here? We didn't get here by giving up. And so while we hesitate and say, oh yeah, I, I, I know. <laughs> But I heard a yes from you, didn't I? Yeah, yes. you there did. You go. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It's going to take how, how many other yeses do we get? Oh, yeah, we already got it. You weren't here. I'm in. You got one right there. Yes. Oh, well, I got his, right. I got his yeah. hand. Okay. It's on camera. It's documented. I got you guys. Oh, there yeah. it is. <laughs> I mean, I'm so, in it 24 look, 7. Elder Pam, I got you all. So is Margaret. I'll be a teacher. 24 7. Everybody that's here, Beth. David, Beth. Okay. I don't have a lot. The gentleman here, his name is. And baby Joe. Marshall. You got a I have. You got it. We've just recruited. Marshall's a friend of family. And so, a paper is circulating for your name, your address, your email, and all that because we are the nuclei of what is going to spread from this point and go forward. That's right. We will all Beautiful. speak with that's one voice. Mm -hmm. We all stand on the same principle. And that principle is, is that Venice is our community. That's right. It, wow. Our voices have to be heard. And our passion needs to be felt to let right. people know that we're not going to just let we we move in down. and take over. We have a we have a history here That's right. and our legacy history. is here and it's going to stay here. You took Broadway, I mean Vernon, we let a sunset in seven, we let you go. Second community, we let you go. Uh -huh. This one, uh-uh, uh-uh. Got to understand. This is 1911. Our parents bartered and built this. this right they here. didn't ask for any help. They didn't ask for nothing. They brought Dude. the supplies. They laid the foundation. My grandfather, his, his grandfather, mm -hmm. they poured the steps. They poured the cement. They poured the, the fat. They did the stucco. They did the frame. And all on their own, not with nothing else but blood, sweat, and tears. And that has got to be respected because when you take the churches, you take our culture. You ain't having it. This is me talking. You can't have it. And, you, and we're not going to lay over and just give it to you, Pinsky family. Sorry. You bought the wrong property. Whoever was your realtor, you need to go back and sue them. Whoever was your broker, you need to go back and sue them. Because Horace preacher. Allen and the preacher. <laughs> was a charlatan, snake oil char charlatan. I want the world to know that. Horace Allen sold this church from parishioners who are in their 90s. Shame on you, buddy. Wherever you are now, you need to be tarred and feathered. I'm saying it because I'm black and I don't like it. You shouldn't have did it. Horace Allen is a disgrace. What kind of bishop sells a church? <laughs> Ask yourself that question. All you guys down there at the VNC and the Lupec, you scoundrels too. Because That's you right. didn't come into the community and ask us mm -hmm. a damn word. So don't tell us we should come to your meetings. No, you need to come to us That's since right. you was elected By illegally. Yeah. You had your workers come in. You bought them beer. You bought them wine for them to vote down there. Yeah. I ain't seen them at one meeting. And I don't go because I know I'll go to jail because all you guys do is sit there and believe whatever somebody come in there, especially if they white, come in there and tell you. It's over, it's done. The revolution has begun. That's right. right. That's right. The gentleman wanted to say something. I just wanted to say, um, I was a college dropout. I was a mechanic for most of my life. And um, when we talk about what it takes to be part of a community coalition, what it takes is community. And the people watching this, you've been here 20, 30, 40, years, two, three, four generations, you have more than a college degree on what this community needs and what's land use and what its planning should be than any of these 
sold out developers and, and architects who just moved here a couple of years, uh, eyelash blink ago, and think they know what Venice needs. Thank you. They don't know nothing about planning. <laughs> they know about land abuse. Those of us that have been here and lived Pine here jumpers. for generations Carpet bag. Carpet know what Carpet works bag. in this community. <laughs> you have the knowledge, you have the college degree in community. And that's the expertise to bring to these things. Bring your common sense because there's too much arrogant um, rhetoric and privilege and not enough common sense about what is decent and humane. You're, anybody who's listening to this, have no hesitation, show up. And it's from the regular people that That's democracy right. is built. Mm -hmm. And if we don't work democracy, democracy doesn't work. We are the kings. In the Bible it says, sir, you know, uh, revere the, the leaders. Revere yourself. According to scripture, you are the leader. Take, your, take the lead that the, that the Lord of this universe has given you. Be a faithful leader. Be a part of this coalition. Yeah. So the, the, the paper that's going around, please everyone sign it so that we can keep in touch. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. All right, Let's remember. save First Baptist Church. Amen. What's up, What's up, <laughs> All right, y'all. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, you know, this is going to be going on every uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock. We might change the time maybe, but for now it's going to be Sunday at 11 o'clock. Um, we're going to keep this going. Um, we probably got double, triple what we had last uh, last uh, week. And like I said, it's not so much about the numbers. It's about the, the strength and the spirit that we're bringing, you know, and... Uh, when they get organized, everybody, black, brown, white. Oh, yeah, handle, bro, yeah. Yeah, good, yeah, whatever you need, grab some. Go ahead, t take half, bro. Yeah. But, yeah, so uh, we got to close this up right now, and thanks to everybody who, who was here and everybody who tuned in. Please share it. Uh, SaveVenice.me is the website. And also, if you go to Save Venice on Facebook, <clears throat> Um, and then on Twitter, we're Save Venice CA. So, um, but yeah, Facebook and the website are the main, I guess, media outlets that we use to um, communicate and share our information. So, peace to everybody out there. Um, let's mobilize, let's get together, you know, uh, join us next, next week as it gets a little bigger and better and more powerful and we start moving more organized, more focused and, um, yeah, bro, it's beautiful. You saw what happened here. You saw the words. You saw just what went down. And, um, you know, can nobody fuck with this. So, uh, peace. Thank you. <laughs>